Today in class, you are going to be building speakers out of drinking cups, magnets, and coils of wire. Speakers are machines for making sound, specifically for converting electric potential energy into sound energy. Sound, as you know, is a compressional wave. It goes outward from high pressure to low pressure, from crest to trough. The reason we can't just do this with our hands, making high pressure and low pressure, is that the range of human hearing is between 20 and 20,000 hertz. That means if we're pressurizing the air, we need to do so between 20 and 20,000 times per second. There's nothing we can do with our bodies that can possibly move that fast. And that's why we need the speakers. A speaker is a machine that can vibrate something several hundred or seven thousand times per second. What's more, it's got to do so at the right frequency that is the right pitch to play your music and not just, as your grandparents call it, that racket. To do this, we're going to use magnetic fields. Check. Two magnetic fields are aligned. Do they attract or repel? What happens next? Take a look, draw a quick diagram, and decide where is north, where is south. Is this a situation of attract or repel? Pause for 10 seconds while you do your work, come to your conclusion, and then press play. Well, it's pretty clear, end with the arrow is north, end without the arrow is south, north to the south attract, two magnetic fields aligned is a recipe for attraction. They are most definitely going to be aligned and they're going to move together so their electrons can spin together happily. Now, what about misaligned? Rotate your magnet and its associated magnetic field the other way. Look, see where is north, where is south. Do they attract, do they repel? Again, make a quick diagram, sketch a few notes, pause and press play when you've all come to your conclusions. Ready? Of course, this is the opposite. They repel. This is south to south. They are going to get out of there as soon as they can if they're free to move. Misaligned magnetic fields repel. We'll use this for motors, making something spin out of the way, and we'll use it for speakers, making two things move apart. Now, we want to move things apart and together, apart and together. You want your speaker cup to move downwards. How should you set up your two magnetic fields? Aligned or misaligned? What do you think? If you answered aligned, you are ready to see how speakers work. To vibrate something several thousand times per second, we are going to use two magnetic fields, and the first is going to come from a permanent magnet. There we go, uh, magnetic field going from north to south. We are all ready to start. The second magnetic field that we have keeping it company, we will build in a coil of wire. How are we going to get a magnetic field in a coil of wire? Run a current through it. That is where your music player comes in. That's what your music player is. There isn't any music in there. It is just a source of electric current. Why is this different than hooking up your speaker to a giant battery and being able to get down and funky? Because your music player changes the frequency 440 times per second. Where does that number come from? 440 times per second is 440 hertz, concert A. It's the note that the singer is singing. Now, we want to make this coil vibrate up and down, attract, repel, attract, repel. How do we decide which one is which? Check your right hand rule. If the current is going this way, counterclockwise through the coil, which way will the magnetic field be going? That's right, it will be going up. There we go, magnetic fields aligned, that is attract, the coil will move down. Now, the music player switches the direction of the current and has it go the other way. Current goes the other way. Current goes clockwise. Magnetic field points down. Those are misaligned magnetic fields. They repel, and the coil moves up. Change this every time the note changes, and you will have things vibrating at different frequencies. How much air pressure does a circle of copper wire make? Well, not so much. That's why you attach the coil to a cup to make the air vibrate, up and down and up and down. 
Notice it's the same shape as a megaphone. Now, in the instructions, you'll be told to turn your music players or your radios as high up as the volume can go, and you'll probably need to put your ear over your plastic drinking cup to make sure that the speaker is actually working. Why? Because plastic drinking cups are designed for drinking, not for high quality music reproduction. I ask you, what's the natural frequency of a plastic drinking cup? Did anyone measure it? Did anyone care? And is it happens to be right in the middle of the standard frequencies for Western music? I don't think so. That's the difference between the speakers you'll make in class and the professional grade speakers you buy and pay real money for. Check it out. Not only is their cup, which you are looking at from above, see? Not only is their cup made of materials whose shape, geometry, um, and material is designed to resonate in more or less the range that our human music tends to play in, they get to specialize. Wider cups have room for longer wavelengths, that's lower frequencies, that's woofers. This will resonate with your lower notes and boost your bass. Tweeters are cups with smaller diameters whose natural frequency is associated with a much shorter wavelength that is much higher. These are tweeters. They will resonate with the higher notes. A really expensive speaker you'll notice in your house has three cups stacked one on top of the other, each one specializing in the low notes, the medium notes, and the high notes. Now, let's take a look at your equipment. Your magnets will be mounted to a wooden base so they don't fall off, and you'll wind a coil of wire to sit on top of them. Then you'll have to strip the insulation off the wire, the most time-consuming part of your project, um, and once that's done, you'll be ready to attach the wire to a circuit. You'll take the uninsulated ends and tie them around your brass mounting posts to make a better connection. Having attached that, you'll then tie the wires down with wing nuts and attach the alligator clip wires from your music player to your desktop invention. Your goal is to make a coil of wire rather like this uh, to be the base of your speaker. Make sure you leave two to three inches of free wire on either side because once you've taped it to the cup and mounted it, you're going to need those free ends to tie off around these brass screws. And when your wire breaks and you have to start all over again, it would be nice if you still had enough wire to go from here to here. This coil of wire has to be a circle in order to get the proper magnetic field straight through the middle. Do not run a wire through here. It's a totally different geometry. It'll mess up your magnetic field. Keep it a perfect circle. This is not going to give you good musical quality. You're going to get a real lousy magnetic field. So in order to achieve a perfect circle, take a good double arm's length of your magnet wire, cut it off, and you can use the mounting dowel here to coil it into a complete circle. This is a two-person job, all hands on deck. Once you've made a nice tight circle, work as a team to ooch your coil off the dowel. And then, for the love of God, do not let go or your coil will go sprung and you will have to untangle it and start all over again. Hold it in that circle and use both ends, one on each side, to tie it off. Probably two ties will not be sufficient. You want more than two so that a circle stays a circle and not a big pile of spaghetti. No one wants to do calculus on a big pile of spaghetti, and even if you did, you would not get a big strong magnetic field through the center. Once you've got your coil tied off, you will notice that this wire is red. And copper metal is not red. You are looking at insulation. You're looking at enamel. And if you clip anything to this, you will get no electrical connection. Most of your building time will be spent scraping off the insulation around 100% of this wire. 
You can use the side of the pen. You can use anything flat and metal. You can use the blade of the scissors. You want to see the raw copper poking through. Mrs. Eliezer, am I done? Um, all this red says you are not done. Mrs. Eliezer, am I done? If you can see red anywhere, you are not done. If it's copper all the way around, then you're going to get a good connection. Once you've got copper all the way around on both sides, notice this one still is not done, you'll be ready to tape your uh, coil to your cup to mount it using one of these rubber tacks to the dowel. Oh, this is such a pain, why won't this go in? Well, fortunately, you'll find most of these cups have pre-poked holes and most of the dowels have pre-poked holes. Mount it so it doesn't actually fall off. Notice you gotta mount it so that your coil is above your magnets. Tie off the copper ends to these two screw posts and tie the wires down using the wing nuts, just like in the picture on your lab report. You will get a very, very poor connection from a wire this thin with an alligator clip this big. That's why we use the brass mounting posts. This will make a good connection and your last task will be to take a Phillips head screwdriver and attach these wires under the screws here to make your own alligator clips. That done, you can use the headphone jack on the alligator clip wires you've just created, plug into your music player, turn the volume all the way up, press play, and see what you hear.